Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the State of the Beauty Industry. I'm your host, the Mons Experience, and tonight we have another very special guest, Amon Bryant from Sharp Edges Barber Institute. This platform was created to spotlight and give special recognition to our beauty professionals who perform world-class services inside as well as outside of their respective communities. I hope everyone is doing well and continue to do their part to stop the spread. We got a mom, Brian, coming in. He's gonna be checking in with us very shortly. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone is doing their part to stop the spread. How you doing, World Peace? Thanks for coming on and supporting, brother. The Moz experience is going to be available very soon. In a few minutes here, we're going to get a request from Mr. Amon Bryant from Sharp Edges Barber Institute. Looks like he's checking in right now. Mr. Amon Bryant, how are you, sir? How you doing today, good brother? I'm doing well, man. How's the family? Family is good. Can't complain. Everybody on lockdown. You know how it is. You guys are still getting used to uh, the homeschooling and all that good stuff with the kids? You know, actually, homeschooling kind of came natural for me a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of liking it. My, uh, my, my uh, 10-year-old, his teacher is, like, surprised that he's getting all his work in on time. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can't, he can't play around with that. He's got to get his work. Um, yeah, my well, 15 year old though, he's he's doing his work. He he's like a college student right now. He go up in his wow. room and he just do his thing. So that's amazing, man. With with my uh with my 13 year old, it's the opposite. You know, I'm constantly running behind him, telling him like, listen, the fourth quarter is a freebie, man. You have no excuse in the world not to get your homework handed in on time. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm just trying to figure out gym class. We ain't really figured that out, you know. Yeah, you know what? I keep getting messages about uh, incomplete or whatnot, but obviously that's not that's not correct in the parent portal. So I'm right. thinking maybe I'm going to try to figure something out with this teacher. I don't, you know, they haven't put together a class. I'm thinking maybe I can help them spearhead that and we can do something physical because, you know, we do a little workouts here ourselves. Yeah. Yo, can you imagine having that parent portal when we was a kid, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so listen. glad I dodged that bullet, boy. Listen, <laughs> look, I, I would never get a chance to turn those those E's into B's. <laughs> I would have been real smart, boy. Listen. <laughs> Way my you dad know, was on me, shoot. <laughs> you know, yeah. sometimes that, that, that portal is an overkill, man. I mean, constantly it goes off all day, every day. I'm like, man, right. okay, just another portal. Just another portal update. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. So what have you been doing to stay sharp uh, mentally, Iman? Well, uh, mentally, you know, I, I pace around the house a lot. You know, I sweep, I mop. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. You actually mop? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. You know, um, you know, as far as, like, just, um, you know, my, my skill set, you know, as far as barbering, because, you know, that's what this is all about. You know, I, I cut my boy's hair. I cut my boy's hair and I cut my hair. Okay. Um, you know, that, that keeps me sharp. It keeps my hand moving in the right direction, you know. And um, that's really what it's all about. But um, that's about it, man. Looks good, by the way, man. The haircut looks good, brother. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. I'm going with something new. And it, okay. They, they told me the other day, well, not the other day, a couple of weeks ago now, I was walking past the classroom. And they, they tried to play me. They was like, Mr. B looked like he got a, a man weave on. I said, man, come on, man. Because, you know, I normally wear it, I wear it low. This ain't a man weave, okay? This is all me. This is all that. <laughs> yeah, but it was funny, though, man. Uh, yeah. so, so were you born and raised in, in Rochester, New York? Come on. I was raised in Rochester. I wasn't born in Rochester, though. I was born... my. My story is, you know, we all got our story, you know what I'm saying? But 
I was I was born in Queens, New York. I, I didn't live in Queens, New York, though. I, I grew up in Miami. I moved to Miami. Well, my parents moved me to Miami when I was about two. And I came to Rochester when I was about about 10 or 11 years old, you know, in about the fifth grade, and then from there on. So, you know, that's all I remember is Rochester. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm straight up Rochester. And, um, you know, went to, went to uh, Monroe, Jefferson, Marshall, a little bit of East. <laughs> you're, listen, if you went to Monroe, Jefferson, East, you're a homegrown product, brother. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Man. You're, you're a homegrown product. <laughs> yeah, man, yep. How long have you been barbering personally? I've been cutting hair um, since 98. So what's that? A little over 20 years? Yep. So, yeah, man, it, it, it's... It's been it's been wonderful, man. I love the business, man. There's there's nothing I don't love about barbering. You know, I've been cutting a long time. Time flies, man. Shoot, yeah, it I does. Feel like, it sure does. You know, twenty years is a long time, but it's cats out there been cutting forty five years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm halfway. I'm not even halfway yet, but you know, some of these cats out there. But yeah, I've, I've been cutting for about twenty years now. You know? Yeah, the um. You know the industry kind of it's taking on its own direction and there's so many different ways that you can move yeah. you know laterally a lot of guys are going online and doing online courses and stuff like that um so you're a first generation do you consider yourself a first generation barber or um in my family yeah yeah absolutely well my brother he started before i did my brother sharif a lot of guys know sharif he um you know he cuts and um he taught me a lot and um, so, yeah, that would be, yeah, we the first generation in our family as barbers. And uh, I've already, um, I, I don't know, you know, I, I've taught my nephews and, you know, they've gone on to open up barbershops. So I think we in the right direction. I think we're doing something, you know, aside from, those are the people in my family, you know. So so the, the initial interest came from you and your brother, just you guys were cutting each other's hair or you were cutting classmates' hair or? <laughs> Yo, my story, right, is uh, is interesting. So when I first started cutting hair, I wasn't, I was in college. You know, I had dropped out of school, 10th grade, went back to school, got my GED, ended up at Brockport, in Brockport, broke college student. You know what I'm saying? Normal story, you know, broke college student. But when I used to just hang out at my brother's shop, he opened up a shop. He was about a year and a half into it, and he was always telling me, yo, you need to cut hair. You need to cut some hair, man. Start cutting. And it was like, I don't know how to cut. You know, it was, you know, it, it was something I was really shying away from. But he, he, he really, really talked me into it. Really, the thing that did it for me was I used to hang out with these guys, these couple dudes, and he, my brother got tired of asking me to cut. So he <laughs> asked... He started asking them because he wanted to rent a chair. You know what I'm saying? He was right. he he's a he's an educator as well in his own right. And so he taught them how to cut. And when I seen them learn how to cut, something, you know, it, it was like, wait, y'all, yo, I, I can try this too. You know what I mean? So um that brought me into it. And he taught me a whole lot. And um that was my beginning of uh cutting hair. We spent five years together and it was great. It was excellent. And until I, it was time for me to get fired, you know, I had to move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, your brother actually fired you, man? <laughs> man, you know, when, when a barber leaves the barbershop, man, it's, it's, it's always, well, in my experience, it's always something. You know what I mean? It's, right. it's never like, hey, man, we cool. All right, man. Yo, man, I'm glad to see you go, man. Nah, you ain't got to pay no more chair, right? You know, it, it's not, you know, it's never great. You know what I mean? Right, right. I still have friends that are barbers that um, okay. that, that used to cut under me. And we we great friends, but it's always something. But that situation went down, and it, it was time for me to move on. You okay, know? okay. And I, I, I had to, to break the umbilical cord because, you know, I, I depended on my brother for a lot. You know, he right, had right, the shop right. license. He had the shop. He had everything. And when I um, came in, it was like I, you know, I was making good money. You right. know, I bought a house. I bought a car. You know what I'm saying? Doing all these <laughs> good things. And, but I was still under his wing. 
and uh, right. it was time, you know what I mean? And, and right. the circumstances went down the way they did, and then I moved on, and right. I was able, you know, I went through my little depressive uh, six months and trying to figure out, you know, I, I got a bachelor's degree in political science from um, Brockport, you know, so I wanted to use it. So right. I ended up going to, um, to uh, work at the city school district, substitute teaching, right? Okay. And that was terrible. Right, you know, it was uh, I, you know, I had to <laughs> this, wait. Let me let me be careful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, still do that. <laughs> no, it was great. It was a great experience, you know, working with uh, those sixth graders, man. Them sixth graders are wonderful, man. I love them to death, man. But that, that's not something that I could do. But I, I, one of the things that I learned about myself is that I like teaching. I okay. really, really like teaching. Okay. I like to see somebody learn. But, you know, that was something that I didn't use until later on. But, yeah, man, then I ended up opening up my own shop on uh, Dewey and Driving Park. And, um, you know, I ended up, oh, that, that was, when I opened up my shop on Dewey and Driving Park, I couldn't hire nobody. Because I'm bringing, they, I, I'm bringing them into my shop. You know what I'm saying? Right, so it was right. hard for me, you know, to bring in their element and what they brought Right, with right. Them, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, barbering can be unprofessional sometimes, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. And that's not me. And um, so I had to let guys go. And what I started doing was training guys in the shop. Okay. So, you know, train one guy. He got on. He was making good money. Train another guy. Ended up with us uh, five barbers. The sixth barber, he came in. And then he, he lived in Batavia. My boy Brandon. And, um, you know, he, he ended up going out there and opening up his spot. But... Yeah, man, we was tight for some years, man. Yeah, it was, it was, it was it's a great. It's been a great experience. Yeah. Yeah, man. It, it's what's interesting is um I heard about you before I even met you, so hmm. that just goes to show you how impactful barbers are. You know, how just so? what would you hear? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I heard I heard great things. Actually, I think yeah. your brother and my brother went to school together, uh, Napoleon Mons. Oh, and uh, okay. he said he used to come get a haircut from you. And uh, yeah. always good things, man. You know, I'm the type of guy, man, I don't judge people based upon predisposed, a predisposed view. Uh, yeah. So it was never anything bad. I just always heard about Amon. And then, you know, obviously the name Sharp Edges came along with hearing, you know, your name. So how exactly did, did uh, that, that idea, that thought of that name Sharp Edges uh, come about? For those that are, that are, uh, that are looking – you know, Mr. Mom Bryant owns a barber institute uh, called Sharp Edges. Yeah, well, Sharp Edges was a, you, you talking about, well, okay, the name. So my wife and I, we used to, um, like, have fun. You know what I'm saying? We met, you know, 18 years ago now. We coming up on, um, you know, 18, well, we've been together 20 years now. Congratulations, and, brother. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man, you know, to have your partner with you. And, yes, sir. Uh, you know, I love it to death. But when we was driving to, back and forth to, um, like, like partying, you know what I'm saying? We'll go to a party over here, go to a party over here. And then, you know, we started going out of town and stuff, going to different parties. And while we on the road, we just talking and building, you know what I'm saying, and thinking. And, you know, when the, when the time came for me to open up my shop, um, I, you know, we had to name it. So I said, okay started thinking about it okay what I, I have to name it something that's related to the business of barbering you know what i'm saying but i wanted to be a little bit different so how could i do that you know there's all these different types of names and everything sharp edges came with the name edges first because i i started thinking about everything i did and then i started thinking about the tools and then i looked and i said okay what do I got my tools? I got my masters. Well, masters. Okay. Well, there's a shop called masters already as masters something, you know? And then I looked at my edges and I said, well, edges, what about edges? And he's like, okay, edges, you know, you got to put the Z on it. Cause you know, you got to put, you got to be cool. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> you you got to be politically right, correct. Right, right. <laughs> so I said, edges, okay. And then so it was just sharp edges. So it, it worked. It, um, you know, it, I, I think it was, it's a pretty good name, you know, and, and, and in business, you know, it's like when you, I don't know, I, I have a ton of mentors and stuff like that. So it's like when you are, are looking at how people came up with their name, 
it's interesting because man, it's it's some wild stories out there, man. How people set their foundation, and it's very important what what you put into a name because that could 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 stick with. I mean, it's gonna stick with you. It is what it is. You know, it's it's gonna you know. I mean, sometimes people are able to, you know, kind of. Anyway, yeah, that's how we right, got right. the name. <laughs> so, <laughs> edit, can you edit that part out right there? Can you like cut? Yeah, that? I will. I most definitely will. <laughs> We're we gonna circle back after the interview. Right, <laughs> so, right, right. As, as as the name itself relates to the industry, and uh, I know you've you've probably given this uh, some some great thought, a great deal of uh, thought. What is Sharp Eddie's gonna look like uh, post COVID nineteen, or what are what are some of your thoughts now as far as what what what's gonna happen with the institute and and exercising social distancing and everything that's going on when we reopen? Well, it's gotta be safe. You know what I mean? It's got to be safe. It's got to be, you know, sanitary. It's interesting because in this field, um, there's a lot of things that we do as barbers um, and as a barbering school that is already extra sanitary. But you're talking about something that you can't see, that you can't even, you don't even know that you got it. You know what I mean? And, and right. until a week or two later, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, there has to be some extra... Um, you know, precautionary things that we do that we put in place, um, extra standards and, and processes. And this is not a, you know, one individual can come up with the with the right answer. This thing is a community um, um, initiative that needs to happen across the board, you know, and, you know, different ideas that people come with that help to build on it to keep everybody safe, you know, because you, you, you we have our students and we have the, the, the general public that are coming in getting haircuts and we have our staff and it's, it's vitally important to make sure that everybody is safe. You know, I want to feel safe. I want to feel comfortable walking right. into my business. And if I don't feel comfortable, I know that other people aren't going to feel comfortable. So it's safety first across the board. Right, right, right. Yeah. What, what was some of your initial thoughts? How did you feel when you, uh, when you see, received the word that you guys are going to be shut down? Terrible. I mean, it was, it, you know, this isn't something, barbering is not something that stops. You know, I'm, I'm in front of people who have dreams and I'm talking to people who have plans. You know, these, these, I have a guy in Buffalo right now that opened his shop. This dude renovated the whole place. He's got a new chair. He got new chairs, floor, ceiling. He did everything to this place. He's not in business right now. He, wow. he has put in all of this money and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help him, you know, coach him like, okay, maybe you should get this. Maybe you should get that. This guy's not in business, you know, and he, wow. he's put in. So, so the impact of this thing, and that's, you know, that's just one guy, you know what I mean? People have families right. and stuff. So when we heard about it, you know, it was like, this is, this is totally devastating. You know what I mean? And, you know, we have to be smart because, you know, people are dying, you know what I mean? And it's, this is, uh, this is as serious as it gets, man. Um, we got to be smart. The timing has to be right, and um, we have to be able to 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 follow the, um, the 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 judgment of intelligent people. You know what I mean? Right. And and not not move too fast um, to to get somewhere that we don't necessarily need to be in a you know and, and open ourselves up for to be hurt even more. You know. Right. Uh, right. But you know, guys are guys are ready to get back in the shop, man. Right. Guys are ready to get back to work. So, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, I uh, I have boys myself, and that that's that's pretty much what's been keeping me sharp. You know, I've been holding off on on uh, releasing videos and stuff like that. You know, just out of uh, just respect for the industry. You know, Man. it went from a million videos a day. You know, seeing all of this this great artwork. You know, yeah. that we create to like nothing. You know, yeah. and so I've yeah. been trying to find a way to kind of inspire everyone to continue to visualize and to, you know, even if you're not cutting in the shop, you know, take yourself through that process every day while you're sitting on the couch with your remote control. You know, you got a client sitting in a chair, he has curly hair, straight hair, whatever the case may be, take yourself through those steps, you know, pretend like it's a new client, you know, so yep. that, you know, mentally, you know, you're, 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 you're going over those things so that when you do get back, that muscle memory will kick right in. Right. Um, well, you, you never lose it. You never right, lose. right, right. You get yeah, rusty. But, you can get real rusty. But being in this quarantine, uh, yeah. Amon, I tell you, man, uh, psychologically, you feel like you can lose it. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. like riding a bike. Right. But I tell yeah. you, the first, the first few weeks, you know, we kind of, 
I didn't cut my son hair the first few weeks or so. That third week, I'm thinking like, man, it's been a while. And right. so I was already kind of working on some some blending and fading, uh, some different techniques and stuff. And so, you know, the first couple of minutes was like, okay, all right. Because, you know, you go through those stages. Once you once you start to master and really get into your craft, uh, sometimes you get lost when you don't know what to do. Right. You can get lost, man, and not know how to jump back. Or hold on a second. You cannot know how to, you know, you got to know how to jump back down to that 1A or whatever that guard is. Going to make sure my battery doesn't die here. Mm -hmm. I made sure I gave myself a, a full charge before I got okay. off. Like, yo, this thing can't die in the middle of the... <laughs> right. right. So like I was saying, you know, you, for, for the folks that are watching, it, it takes a number of different steps and, and a lot of times mastery you know, to create that that process, you know, that fade that, as we refer to it as the blurry fade or the blend from the from the radius to the luminance, it takes a tremendous amount of work, you know, yeah. once you get in there. And like I said, when I was when I was initially trying to master it, I would get lost. You know, I, I forget, you know, was I closed? Was I open? Was I three quarters? Was I half? And uh, I had to really sit down and write down the steps until it became like second nature. So right. I was working on that new blend with the the detachables and like i said that first couple of minutes i was like all right <laughs> but it turned out great the haircut yeah. turned out great well you know um, the, the the learning curve for everybody is different right and the one th that's one thing that i love about teaching and being a, a barber and instructor is that you 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 definitely have that point that moment where somebody learns what you're talking about like when they get it you see that they get it and right, I, I remember right. when it happened to me, um, you know, years ago when I was cutting my boy's hair, my, not one of my sons, but my man, I was cutting his hair. And for the life of me, I could not get his line right. And I, I remember stepping back and looking at it and I'm looking at his beard and it's not right. I can see that it's not right. And, and for the life of me, I, to the day, even today, I know that that was a moment for me because... I know that I learned something. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna get into the uh, the twenty one question rapid fire, Amon. Okay. Um, you're gonna I answer heard about these. This I gotta be ready for this. Okay, Go okay. Uh, so you gotta answer these questions as as truthfully and as quickly as possible. Okay. Okay. Um, tonight we're not gonna do a giveaway, but I promise the next interview I got something special for everyone that's uh, that's tuning in and supporting uh, the state of the beauty industry. So you ready, Amon? I'm ready. Here we go. Lauren Hill or Erica Badu? Lauren. Kumo D or Big Daddy Kane? Big Daddy. Keep sweating, I'll be sure. <laughs> I'll be sure. <laughs> Vince Carter or Tracy McGrady? Uh, Vince Carter. Favorite comedian? Uh, Eddie Murphy. Favorite TV show? Uh, Soprano. Favorite actor? Uh, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Chan or Chuck Norris? Jackie. Gucci or Salvatore Ferragamo? Gucci. Nike or Reebok? Nike. Favorite football team? Buffalo. Buffalo Bills, baby. Buffalo Bills, baby. Bills Nation. <laughs> Maybach or Porsche? Uh, I'm going to go with the Porsche. Would you rather live in a mansion or on an island? Island. In order of preference, Andis, Oster, or Wall? Andis, Oster, and Wall. Pedicure or manicure? Uh... Right now, pedicure. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> How many pairs of clippers do you own? Uh, I've lost count. 52. <laughs> How many haircuts can you do in an hour? Uh, four. Largest tip you've ever received? Uh, $100. If you could jump into a pool of something, what would it be? Um... <laughs> the M95 mask. 
<laughs> right now. <laughs> if you had a time machine, would you go back in time or visit the future? I would go back. Okay. I'm going to give you two numbers, okay? You're going to pick one. I want you to listen carefully. 45 or 44? 44. So you support Obama? Of course. <laughs> good man, good man. I don't see the connection, but okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, hair enhancements. How do you feel about hair enhancements, Mark? Well, mine is going pretty good. You know, it's it's stay it's sticking. Nah, man, this this is uh we in 2020, man. This, these people are creating things that, you know, these things have been around forever, but they're doing it in new and amazing different ways, man. I mean, you got you got you transforming people. Um, when you you when you sit down and do that with somebody on a personal level, you you change their whole feeling and their whole demeanor. I love it. I love it. Good deal, good deal. Uh, yeah. Non-surgical non hair replacements. Well, we know you don't have one because you've already let us know. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 they got me with that one, man. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> did you have a student, did a student actually pull your hair on? Or, or you just, nah, they you didn't pull my hair, but I had to give him the one, two, three, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, man. Like, <laughs> oh, boy. So what? Uh, let's let's go back. Let's rewind just a little bit. Um, as far as the, the Part Ten Code, um, Aman, uh, do you think after this is all said and done, we should be considered essential uh, workers? Um, look, man, you got um, one on one contact with people. Um, very very close contact with people. You got barbers. I mean, we've all seen these stories on Facebook and online and everything where barbers have died, man. So I, I can't support that. I can't say that, you know, I mean, you, you, you have to be able to step back and allow um, people who are in the right position to make decisions in order to save lives and to keep people safe. So are we essential? Of course we're essential. I mean, in the sense of the word that we need to be there for people and, and make sure that you know, people stay sharp and um, stay who they are. You know what I mean? Right, but, right. Um, you know, in, in the sense of um, essential, like a doctor? No. You know what I mean? No. It, you know, essential, like a nurse? You know what I mean? No. Absolutely not. You know, a truck driver? You know, uh, people that, that's getting food from one place to? No. No, I don't think so. It's not that serious. So it's it's better that we don't, we don't rush back into reopening, that we, we do the right things and we just follow instructions uh, as we should as far as social distancing is concerned. Uh, yeah. We we are disease and infectious control professionals, but like you said, um, there's no containment here. And you have to think about the value of a life. You know, you and, know? and at the same time, you know, you know, people, I know people are struggling, you know what I mean? They There needs to be that other element of support, you know, for people that, um, that need it, you know, during this time. Um, but as far as like, rushing to get back to what to get to get back to 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 put people in danger now the the good thing about our industry is that we do study infection control we do understand what it is to be safe and to sanitize our equipment and to keep our area thoroughly sanitized and and to keep our client from catching a disease from the next guy that just sat down in the chair yeah we we cover all of that and um we will get back to work we will um, um, get back in there, but when the time is right, and right. you know, it, it, it's important to make sure that that time is right before we go back in. And I'm not the one that's gonna say that at all. You know what I mean? I, right, I, right. I, I'm, I'm gonna leave it to the to to people who know a lot more about this thing than I do. You know? So, so I would imagine you would have to probably reach out to your students. You know, at that at that particular time, um, and. Um, you know, hopefully they're they're all listening and they're, uh, you know, following what's going on so that they they end up picking back up where they left off. At. How exactly how many hours do they have to complete? What uh, where were you guys at as far as is it quarters or, you know, how do Man, you go you about know, we, we had we had guys that were right at the end. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, man. Literally at the end, almost 600 hours. Oh, man. But what do you say to somebody like that, you know, when they have to, you know, complete their uh, their clinical hours? 
um, it's important to, to get that stuff in. And, you you know, it's a 600-hour program. You know, that's, that's the long and short of it. And I take it very serious in the sense that, you know, I want – my students to make sure that they fulfill every part of that. So they, they need to, um, there's a lot of work that needs to get done. Right. And um, just to be quite honest with you, it, it's the, the program. I mean, you're talking about taking a six, a four and a half month program and you're going to be in a career for 20, 30 years. You're going to be a barber for the rest of your life. You know, what I mean? right. it is what it is, you know? So, so you, the, the four and a half month time frame you know, in other states, is, is, is it's a short time, <laughs> okay? It's a very short time. So we want to make sure we maximize that time. So, we, you know, we got guys that just started out, and we've been in communication with our students and talking with them and making sure that um, we, we let them know that we will, we will get back as soon as we can. You know, I'm eager to get back. You know, nobody like just sitting around the house. You know what I mean? That's not, right, right. not the move, but... You know, you got to you got to go when it's time to go. Now, um, do you think you guys are going to expand? How many uh, how many barber institutes do you uh, own and operate? Come on, two. We own two. Uh, one in Rochester on uh, three ninety eight West Ridge Road, and the other one at twenty eight forty four Delaware Avenue in um, Buffalo. And um, that is where we're at right now. We we're blessed to be able to do it. And, um, you know, when it all comes down to it, it's, it's our staff that, um, that really, um, you know, make the biggest difference. Um, Mr. Diamond, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Crandall in Rochester, um, you know, they're on um, Mr. Hawkins at the front desk. You know, we all, you know, Mrs. Bryant, myself, you know, we all, you know, put together a team that we have the same goal in mind. You know, we want to make sure these, that everybody is, is, is fully trained and, you know, working in Buffalo is, is different. You know what I mean? Working, it, it's, it's a different environment working in Buffalo than it is in Rochester. And I've been in Buffalo. We've been in Buffalo for four years now. And um, it, it flew by. It really flew by. I feel like I just opened up in Buffalo. Um, but it's it's the same animal. You know what I mean? And that's that's the beauty of the whole thing. You know, it, it doesn't matter where you go. It's, it's the same thing. A fade is a right. fade. And it's either done right or it's done wrong. Right, right. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> I've never been the one to to, to um, compliment somebody if it ain't right. And <laughs> you know, it's it's funny though because I, I work a lot, man. And when I go into the classroom, I, I don't have time to play around. You know what I'm saying? We don't have time right. to just play around, man. It, you, we need to get this right. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> when it, when they when they see me coming, they don't they don't necessarily like it all the time, but. Um, I know what my purpose is, you know what I mean, and and right. I, I'm I'm happy to um, to that God has blessed me to be in a position to to train people in Western New York. You know, I can truly say that, you know what I mean, and um, you know, it's it's been it's been great. I you think know? to a certain extent, you know, as barbers, we're you know, once we do develop that eye, we we all become barber police. You know, like you know, my wife and I could be out. <laughs> And uh, now she's pointing out, hey, babe, look, look, at that. <laughs> is that line supposed to be there? <laughs> right, right. Just, and when I was going through my struggles, ready. when I was going through my struggles, she tell me like, hey, hey, honey, wait, what's that right there? <laughs> right. Hey, man, it's, it's something that you, I remember that too. It's just like as a brand new barber, you, you might forget about this one. There's a vibration that you get in your hand for about a week. For about a good really? week. Yeah, you get because you ain't never held a pair of clippers that vibrate. Right, right, right. See, I go through this a lot because I deal with the students and they're like, yo, my hands are vibrating. <laughs> 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 it's just something that you forget that, okay, right. I'm used to it now. But yeah, man, that that noticing of, of those haircuts out there, you know, it's 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 we're gonna see a lot of oh my god, we're gonna see so much of this when we get back to work, man. But it, it's all good because it, it's like it's like when I was in the shop and I used to like when my – keep this between me and you. I used to like when my customers went and got their hair cut somewhere else because, you know, when you got that camaraderie with that person, I know his hair. I know his grain. I know that if you go over it like this, you it's, it's not going to be right. And right. they could sit in the best barber, you know, in, in Rochester, but – they're not, it, 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 that's the beauty of this whole thing. They're not going to cut it exactly the way you do. 
and right, right. they're not going to talk to them the way you do. They're not going to. It's just going to be different. They're going to be safe. Right. They're going to give them a good haircut. They're not going to be embarrassed walking around. They might have a really nice haircut, but it ain't what you do. Right, so right. when they sit back in your chair, you know. But there, there's going to be a lot of a uh, lot of changes coming up and a lot of uh, adjustments that we all have to make. Right. So, what what uh what it, what self care advice would you give for uh for the listeners as far as uh maintaining? It looks like you you've done a very good job, my brother, at uh maintaining. <laughs> you self care? Uh, ooh, that's a hard one. I was actually um thinking about how could I teach somebody how to cut hair on, on over the phone, like on Zoom? How could I? How could I? Teach them, yo, how to hold the head like this. Okay, go halfway. All right, bring him one notch down. All right, go up a little bit. No, that's too much. Don't go up that high. Go up a little. Come on, man. I would advise them, don't do nothing. Be still. Okay? Right. Keep it the way it is. Don't do nothing. Don't move too fast. Don't move too slow, okay? Keep it the way it is. When it's time for you to see me, just come see me. Don't right, do right. nothing. Follow DJ Catlin's lead. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, you know, the, the, the great thing, you know, there's always, it, you know, we always have these bittersweet moments in life. And, uh, you know, I, I think people are really starting to understand what the value of the enhancement of parent, parents' industry is all about. I mean, uh, yeah. we have such a huge impact on the yeah. way that people look the way that people feel, you know, we create that, that confidence, you know, when you wake up yeah. every day, you know, Absolutely. with that, with, with that, you know, being said, you know, you could have the finest suit in the world, but if, if, if you're not well groomed, you know, that's what gives you that, that feeling of being regal, you know, feeling like royalty. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I take that with me and it gives me a lot of pride to know that I'm part of an industry that, that has that type of importance, you know, and, um, you know, like you said, you know, it's, it's, it's not, well, like I said, it's not that it's an essential business in a sense of life and death, but it is essential in, in, the, in our lifestyle and in, and in the way that we want to, um, you know, it, it's a part of our character. You know, it, it helps mold our character and who we want to present ourselves as in the community. So, yeah, heck yeah. It's like when I started growing my hair out. I used to have waves. Now they're looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> like, hey, like, Amon, back then it was uh, waves. Something. Back then it was waves for the babes and curls for the girls, right? <laughs> I'm going to let you say that. <laughs> well, my wife is listening, so. <laughs> right, right. Okay. I had waves for the babes back then. No doubt. <laughs> um, oh, man. So what is, what is your all-time favorite haircut? Um, it's gotta be, you know, the, the, the one and a half with the grain with the taper. Definitely gotta be, you know, it, that's, that's going to be your sharpest, cleanest. I mean, that wave cut, man, that, that, that 360 Jeezy, you know what I'm saying? That, that yeah, clean, yeah. yeah, man, that clean cut. That's my favorite. And, you know, it's funny because every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, should I get my waves back? <laughs> I'm a, I'm eventually going to go back. I'm definitely going to go back, but, uh. I'm going through a phase right now, you know. We're okay, born, okay, so, you know. okay. <laughs> I thought I thought you would say like high low or, or box cut, man, because you've you know, been in the I mean, for so long. They they all have their, uh, you know. I don't know. You know what it is? I'm really good at it. That's what it is. Okay, okay. Well, and I okay. fell in love with it because <laughs> I I, I realized a lot of my customers had waves with a taper and a in a, a, a you know blend out taper in the back, and it was like. Dang, this you know it's really nice, you know what I mean. And um, my I had some difficult customers, man, but I love them to death. <laughs> but you know, I, I one of the things I realized was is that um, my difficult clients are only difficult because they know I could do it. If 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 they didn't think I could do it, they wouldn't be difficult with me. They would just be like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, we good. We good. <laughs> but they, they, they looking at me, they like every little hair. It's like, okay, I know why you're doing that. Yeah, like you said, e even even if they don't have the wave pattern, I think it still is one of the, the cleanest, smoothest cut, you know, even if it's if it's a low, mid, or high, you know, yeah. just having that perfect symmetry 
where there's, you know, you're going from the luminous, like microscopic piece of hair yeah. right up into, you know, what the one and a half leaves is a very, very crisp uh, look uh, on any gentleman. Yeah, um, and I'm talking one and a half on the 76ers with the grain. Yes, detachable. Hey, I'm, I'm yeah. talking about, yeah, yeah 76ers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, not, I, not the wall. I'm, I'm an Andy's baby. You know what I mean? I, I, I started with Andy's. And um, you know that's that's what I learned with you know and how you you know I don't know there's a there's a saying how you start is how you stay, you know and right. um, you know I try not to be that way. There's these uh these new ones I seen you using them um the gold ones the uh, yes the trimmers Battle Star looking uh yeah man them things <laughs> look crazy right so <laughs> I just dated myself right <laughs> Battle Galactic but, yeah you did. <laughs> no, but they they sharp though, and I'm looking at like they give a really good cut. And you know when it when it comes down to it, you know I I like the uh, you know I've been studying it and seeing what it, you know I might I might end up looking 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 for a pair maybe later on. But you know I, I haven't been in the shop like that to right. to 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 you know use it on a regular basis. But um, Andy's, you know, T outliners. I mean, when they when they cut the when they cut the front off of the T outliners, it was a wrap. It was like, oh man, that that did it for me right there. Right, like, right, right. This is everything. But um, yeah, yeah. That that uh, for for a number of years, I used a T edger, uh, the T outliner, and then, like you said, I I started modifying mines and um, mine, and um, I put the deep tooth blade on, and man, it it gave a really good crisp line. But right. then I kept I kept seeing the Battle Galactus. You just named that. <laughs> I kept seeing the gold Battle, Gal Battle Galactus. And I said, man, you know, I, I got to see what all the hype is about. Right. And I tell you what, Amon, the best thing about it is you don't have to take the blade off the zero gap. You know, you got to take it off, put That's it up against the flat saw. surface yeah. and, and all of that stuff. Yeah. You take a little Allerance key, you yep. eyeball it. You, you tighten it back up. I mean, it takes away all of the work. And once you get it tight, man, that that clipper, it cuts razor sharp without yeah. biting. You can get it down to like a, a fraction of a millimeter. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, and you know I we got, need I got that. You know what I'm saying? So we don't bump <laughs> up. But uh, yeah, that, that, that's what that's what I'm interested. In. They they piqued my interest. Yeah. But, well, you know, maybe you and I can collab one day. I, I, I was actually thinking about that as well. You know, how do you, how can you train someone um, train. via video conference, Zoom or whatever, uh, on how to cut hair? I, I think I, it's I, very, I think it's doable. I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it, it probably is. Um, I think about how I train somebody right now. And I need to be in your face, and I gotta, you know, sometimes I gotta grab your your right. clipper or your hand, you know, and right, say, right. do it like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. sometimes you gotta do that, and a lot of my students will attest to that. Sometimes you gotta, you know, be there to. Oh man, it's so many little elements to it that I can't even think about right now that just come up, and right, you right, know, I, it, I I couldn't. I would feel weird, man. It, it it would feel weird, man. Like I'm doing somebody a disservice, man, because I, I know what I want to get out of every haircut. You know, it, it really right. means that much to me. And I know that when it does, it, it you know, it, it's, 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 it's tough, man. It's tough. But we, right. we in a new world, ain't we? Yeah, we are. Where adjustments need to be made. Right, right. I, I can see in, you know, in, in your atmosphere and in what you do, um, but I, I can see someone who's just starting out who wants to learn the basics. You know, um, I'm, I'm kind of working on something myself to to show people the basics. It's just like anything, any sport, you know, basketball, any sport, you can name it. Uh, when someone is struggling, and I don't care what level they're at in their career, yeah. they always come back to the basics. Right. If you yeah. get the basics, that's the foundation because you can't build that house without the basics. You, you yeah. can go on YouTube. And watch a million and one videos. Yeah. And guess what? You're gonna make a million and one mistakes because right. you don't know what you're looking for. You don't have that grip, grip pressure control. And like you said, in your your situation when you're when you're at the Sharp Edges Barber Institute, you need to physically grab the grab the clipper and show them because they may and they may not necessarily see what you see. And yeah. right there, you can correct them and guide them in the other direction because yeah. they just don't see it. 
Yeah. No, I mean, it's important. I mean, setting that, that good foundation, sometimes you got you to gotta take out steps. You right. have to, you got to take out steps because, and I tell my students straight up, this ain't how I cut. Look, this ain't how I do it. But I need to, you got to start somewhere. You know what I mean? You got to start somewhere. And um, when, when you got somebody that's never picked up a pair of clippers before, that you know, don't draw. You know, you know, drawing. It's like you know, you can draw. You, can fade. you, you okay. tell them how to hold, but, the, hold the clippers like a pencil, and they they don't right. get it. <laughs> exactly. So you know, I mean, when you when you have it like that, you know, you have to be creative in the way that you teach. So it's like you have to bring it to to to. Okay, let's leave this out. You know, let's leave out those things, and let's just do this, and let's see if you could just do this, this, and this, and then. Now you got a foundation to build on, so it's 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 very important. But that's you know that's that's how it is though, man. As we as people, you know, we need a good foundation, um, and that's that's why it's very important that we wait because we do right. need a good foundation right. in order to get back. Because if Absolutely. we don't have a good foundation, what are we doing? We're running back into the same thing, and and it's going to be even worse. So I, I don't, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, of waiting and listening. And, um, and, 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 you know, I, I know real recognize real. So when I hear it and, it and it makes sense to me, then, hey, that's when, that's when I can move. So. Got you. So what is, what is, uh, what would you say is your forte when it comes to, to teaching? Um, oh, the fade, man. <laughs> <laughs> I could cut, man. Listen, you know, it, it, it's funny, man, because when you get to a point where you know what you're doing, it it's it's you, you get you get happy you know what i'm saying you get satisfied and barbers are natural teachers barbers are natural teachers just like anybody that knows how to do something we like to share it barbers are nice people we we're very egotistical you know because <laughs> we, we know and some like you know to share but others don't <laughs> we know something and you know if my my I, I like to fade you know what i'm saying i like to blend i like to make it look like that 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 blurry fade, you know what I mean? Where when I look at it and I step back and I, it's like it's clean, you know. Whether it be a taper, you know, a drop fade, low fade, high fade, I don't care what it is. That blend, and that blend transcends into so many different things, you know. I mean, you, you could have straight long hair doing doing a, a a ninety or across the head, but then when you step back and look at it, that's a blend. You know what I mean? It it needs to blend together. You could be feathering somebody's uh, fine hair on the side. It needs to blend. And if it don't blend, it ain't right. And let's get that's, it right. You know what I mean? True. That, that's true. That's, that's the thing. If you can't recognize how to get it right, and that's why I, I thank God, because I am able to get it right. You know what I mean? Because right. if you can't, right. you got problems. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, it's that blend, man. I love it. When I when I uh, the edge up too. Right, Hold on, right, man. The right, edge up right, too. Right. That 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 what, line got to be sharp. You know what I mean? It, it has to be sharp. sharp, and it got to be right. So you know the adjustment of your blade, like we're talking about, is where it begins. You know, I remember back in the day, man, where guys used to bring me their clippers. Man, can you can you just do these for me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I would right. be sitting there. You know, okay, let me take a few minutes and get their blade right. And um, I remember doing all my all all my guys. I used to just I, I didn't want you right. cutting nobody, and I wanted it to be right because your representation of sharp edges. So, um, you know that that the lines got to be right. You know your right. lines. It's got this is sharp edges. You know what I mean? So it's got to right, be right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, got to go together. It can't be. When, you know, when I when I originally started thinking of my logo of mine, you know, it, it's it's crazy because um, that. That the fade, like you said, you know, once you get it, being able to do it consistently yeah. is truly an art in and of itself. You yeah. you can take that fade and put it into any any section. You know, now they have burst fades. They got a, a number of different sh uh, shapes and stuff that they're using. But if you can't perfect that fade, you're in trouble. So when I started thinking of my logo and stuff like that, that's what. Yeah. That's how I yeah. came up with the fade or die, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No that's need. Me. Fade or die. <laughs> no doubt. That it's is knowing me, me too. man. It's knowing me too. Like sharp edges came to you, man. I, I was sitting thinking, thinking like, yeah. <laughs> I think I might have died. Fade that or die, time, man. <laughs> I think I might take that. Listen, either you fade or you die. That's fade it. or die. <laughs> 
okay, man. It, but it's that serious, though, man. Because at the end of the day, man, we, what are we talking about? We're talking about right, a career right. that's supposed to stick with you for the rest of your life. That's right. Well, I mean, either it's going to fade right or you are literally going to die from this business. Right. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, man. All right, we're going to wrap it up, Amon. Hey, man. I want to thank you for having me on, man. This was fun, man. I appreciate this, man. I, I appreciate cool. you, too, man. You're... You're part of the front end as well as the back end of what makes the beauty industry what it is today. The students that complete your curriculum at Sharp yeah. Edges Barber Institute are the barbers of the present as well as the future. Your, visual, your visualization as well as your ingenuity has given the barber region as well as the Buffalo region the opportunity to be a part of an amazing profession, which is the beauty industry. So I'm giving you your roses today, brother. I appreciate you, you. Be well. Thank you. Absolutely, man. Have a good one. All right. <laughs>